The NBA's regular season has come to an end, the stage is set for the play-in tournament and the playoffs to get underway, and the real fun is about to begin. But before we get to all of that, it's time for the media to cast their votes for who they believe should win every award. That's what we're here to go through today, as I will be going through every major award picking who I believe should and likely will win, while also discussing a few runner-ups that are firmly in the mix but will come up just shy. This includes the 6th man of the year, the most improved player, the rookie of the year, the defensive player of the year, and of course the most valuable player. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first award we'll be going over is the 6th man of the year, and the selection here this year is Malik Monk of the Sacramento Kings. Monk had his best season as a pro this year, not only putting up a career high in points, but he also made major strides as a primary ball handler and playmaker too. Off the bench he averaged about 15 points and 5 assists per game, and pretty much every game he's in the team's closing lineup in crunch time, trusted to be heavily involved when the game is on the line. Unfortunately, he suffered an MCL sprain a few weeks ago that caused him to miss the last 9 games of the year, but before he went down, he actually had ranked in the top 10 of the entire NBA in clutch points, showing he played some of his best basketball when the game was on the line both as a scorer and a passer. This was definitely a tight race though, with Nas Reed and Norman Powell being the two runners up for the award who come up just short. Nas Reed is unfortunately on a team that has two elite talents that play his position, as both Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns play ahead of him on the Timberwolves, but when he subs in for one of them, the Timberwolves get an immediate boost of offense from him with his versatility as a scorer. Reed is a highly skilled big man who can score inside and out, finish strong around the rim, and knock down threes at an impressive 41% clip. As for Norman Powell, he's another typical example of a bench scorer who subs in to get his shots up and space the floor putting up about 14 points per game, shooting 48% from the field and 43% from three, which is incredible efficiency on top of it. The next award up is the Most Improved Player Award, and the selection here this year is Tyrese Maxey of the Philadelphia 76ers. This year, there were a lot of players that made strides forward, improving themselves across the board, but the kind of jumps these players made vary a ton. For young talent drafted highly with a few years under their belt, the expectation is for them to eventually become a high-level starter, so when they go from the inconsistent talent to proving that they are reliable at that level, they deserve to be in the mix for this award, but it's an even harder jump to go from being a high-level starter to being a bona fide all-star and borderline all-NBA talent, and that's exactly the jump that Maxi took this season. Maxi was scoring 20 points per game last year and improved on that by 6 this year, on the way to putting up 26 points and 6 assists per game, and he dropped 50 or more points in 3 different games this year as well. He's improved his ability to create space off the dribble and knock down deep jumpers, he's more of a threat as a passer, and that gets him the nod for the most improved this season. There is stiff competition behind him though, as the runners up here are Kobe White and Jalen Williams. Kobe White's career was trending in the wrong direction in the last two years, so it was awesome to see him break out after Zach Levine got injured, and he finished the year as a confident 19 point per game scorer. Jalen Williams was the runner up for last year's Rookie of the Year award, so he was already on the right path path, but he definitely got better across the board this season, especially as a perimeter shooter for the one-seeded Thunder Squad. He was an incredibly reliable second option as well, who makes smart decisions and provides the kind of versatility on both ends of the floor that could see him in the All-Star conversation soon. The next award up is the Rookie of the Year, and the selection this year is obviously Victor Wembanyama of the San Antonio Spurs. This award was maybe a little bit close in the first month of the season, but Wembanyama just continually got better and better as the season progressed, and by the end of it all, he was blowing out his competition. He's now at the point where his peers are the other elite talents of the league, not his fellow rookie classmates. Wemby put up averages of about 21 points, 11 rebounds, 
4 assists, and a league-leading 3.6 blocks per game, which is an insane rookie stat line that puts him in the conversation of the best rookies of all time. He's an alien that can create shots off the dribble at 7'5", he comfortably pulls up for deep threes, and there's nothing you can really do about it, he has amazing hands, so when you throw the ball up to him around the rim, he's snagging it and throwing down alley-oops you didn't even think were possible, and he's only going to get better from here. As for the run up for this award though, we have Chet Holmgren and Brandon Miller. Chet Holmgren had a fantastic rookie season in his own right, impressively bouncing back after missing all of last year, which would have been his rookie year, because of a broken foot. He's a great interior defender, anchoring the Thunder's fourth-ranked defense. He fits right into OKC's up-tempo style as a mobile big man that helps start a ton of fast breaks, and he's already a reliable shooter from deep. Brandon Miller was also one of the few consistent producers on a bad Hornets team that dealt with a ton of injuries taking huge strides throughout the year as a shot creator that ended up finishing at 17 points per game for him. The next award up is the Defensive Player of the Year, and the selection this year is Rudy Gobert of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Last season, the Timberwolves trading for Rudy Gobert looked like one of the biggest mistakes they could have possibly made, but this season, he looked much more settled into his new home, the chemistry became a lot stronger with his teammates, and he got back to defending at the highest level like we had grown accustomed to seeing him do when he was in Utah. The Timberwolves had been a struggling defensive team for years, but this season, Gobert's work as their anchor was so impactful that they finished the season as the league's number one ranked defense which will always be an important accolade for this award, and when players tried to attack the rim with Gobert manning the middle, they shot a whopping 14.4% worse in the paint with Gobert defending them. His rotations are crisp, nothing comes easy around him, and his work will be earning him his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. Now as for the runners-up just behind him, we have Victor Wembanyama and Anthony Davis. Wembenyama is the player that gives Gobert the hardest push for the award, and honestly, it's really hard not to give it to him, but ultimately, one of the consistent themes of the Defensive Player of the Year winners is that they elevate the teams around them to being one of the best units in the league, and the Spurs were just the 21st ranked defense this season, so I have no doubt that Wemby will win this award many times in the future, but not this year in his first season. Anthony Davis also comes into the mix for his work generating turnovers, blocking shots, and holding things down for an inconsistent Lakers squad, but not enough to dethrone Gobert. And finally, we've arrived at the biggest award of all, and the selection for the MVP of 2024 is Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets. I know every year this award gets a lot of heated debate going on, and this year is no different, but Jokic is once again leading the field. He led his Nuggets team to being tied with the Thunder for the best record in the West, his individual production is as good as anyone's, the advanced impact metrics almost all have him leading the way in that regard, and the combination of all of that is what gives him the edge. Winning matters in this race, so being at the top of the standings already gives him a leg up, then he's in the top 10 of the league in scoring, putting up 26 points per game, he's in the top 5 of the league in rebounding, grabbing over 12 boards per game, and he's also in the top 3 of the league in assists, dishing out 9 per game. As for the runners-up who definitely made this a tight race, we have Luka Doncic and Shea Gilgis Alexander. Luka is probably the one who would be closest to Jokic for me because he really did have an unbelievable year with arguably better individual production than Jokic, but I am just never going to be someone who agrees with giving the MVP award to a player not on a top-seeded team. Shea Gilgis Alexander is obviously leading the one-seed Thunder, but then his individual production, while great in its own right specifically as a scorer, does not stack up to Jokic across the board or even to Doncic for that matter. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who you want to win each of these awards. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.